Tiger so far? Can you describe that? And, and, uh, what it was like afterwards? Did you hear from your dad and family and friends? Yeah, that's really what I look forward to after the game, just seeing my family who, who went to the game and just uh, embracing that moment with them because, you know, they've been waiting for that for a long time too. So just seeing them after the game, see how happy and proud they were of me. Uh, I just came home and just watched some more football too, but it, w it wasn't nothing different than any other game. So I just enjoyed the time with my family after. Did you sense you were kind of building throughout the season toward that kind of performance? Did, did you say, say that again? Did you kind of sense that you were building throughout the season, that you were building towards that kind of breakout performance? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I felt like I was, the way that I was preparing and practice every week and uh, just performing consistently in games, I felt like it, it was time that it was, it was going to come soon. And uh, it came in a good week for Florida State, so I'm proud. And uh, hopefully I can continue to play like that soon. Scott said that he told you last week uh, that, that the big opportunities for the big plays were, were coming and, and to be ready and make the most of it when they did. did he talk, what did he tell you after the game? Uh, he just said he was proud of me and that uh, I did a good job of staying ready because, you know, you never know when that time's going to come. So, you know, you just got to prepare every week for that moment. And uh, when it comes, just take advantage of it. And uh, I did that this week and um, hopefully I can build off of it. It was a hard kind of biding your time. You scored the first touchdown of the season in the opener and then, yeah. you know, uh, no, it wasn't hard. You know, we were still winning. So that's all that matters to me is just that we win games and that uh, all my brothers are still playing well, too. So at the end of the day, as long as we win the games and everybody else is playing well, I'm, I'm good with it. Mario, you guys are winning a lot. Of, you were winning a lot of games in September. What's going on with the offense in October? It seems like you guys are really clicking and finding a rhythm. Uh, I don't know. Like that's 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 credit to the coach uh, doing a good job preparing us every week, and credit to our defense too, because we go against one of the best defenses in the country in practice. So when we got, when it comes to game day, like we're ready to go against anybody. So uh, that's just how we practice. You know, we push each other, we get the best out of each other, so that when it comes to game day, we're ready to do whatever. And, you know, everybody's come in here said we're not satisfied. We can do better. I mean, to people on the outside, it's hard to see how you guys can do better. Once yeah. What can you work on to improve to make things even better? Just stay consistent. And, you know, if we stay consistent, then it's going to get better. Uh, we know that, you know, uh, we're mature and we have a lot of people that's played in the past. So we know what we're capable of from doing from practicing in camp all the way up to this point. We know what we're capable of doing. And uh, as long as we continue to stay focused, uh, stay humble. And uh, I feel like the sky's the limit for our offense. Oh yeah, definitely. That's that, that's that's definitely helping out that we have one guy now. Uh, Trevor's doing a great job, and uh, since he's got here, he's been doing a great job. So we knew uh, when he was uh, named the starter that he would be mature enough to carry this offense through whatever we go through. And right now, we're on the streak. We're doing very great, and uh, I know he's gonna continue to grind. You know, the whole offense going too. So uh, as long as we can stay focused, like I just said, uh, the sky's the limit for us. <laughs> How did you go about building a rapport with him on the field? Um, is there sort of a getting used to so I'm assuming when a guy gets the ball out as quick as he does as a receiver, you've got to be kind of adjust a little bit to, to a quarterback like that too. How did that relationship kind of build over the last few months? Uh, it started with me when uh, he first got here in the spring because, you know, um, I knew he's going to he's gonna play eventually. So I wanted to get uh, used to the way that he threw the ball, how the ball came off his hands. And uh, it started early with me with him. Uh, and then when practice started, you know, we started doing stuff at the practice when he got named starter so that I can get used to uh, the way that it comes off and how he plays and stuff like that. He's telling me different things, different tips on how he wants me to run routes and stuff like that. So it's just a two-way thing, just getting to know and how I run routes and how he's going to deliver the ball. It's just a two-way thing and just getting used to each other. Is that a thing you like as a receiver when a quarterback is kind of not necessarily telling you what to do, but kind of like you know giving you some idea of like where he would, where he best sees you fitting in a, in a route or something like that, or yeah. how best to, to you know be there for his particular. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely uh, helps you feel more comfortable uh, that you that he knows where you're going to be. Um, and it just shows how mature he is. You know, he's just a freshman. He's doing that already. So it's only going to get better. So I'm, I'm excited to see how much he's going to improve over the years. Since being named star, what kind of changes have you seen in him for the good? You know, in, in one, you know, acclimating with you guys as a team, as a unit. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, leadership skills. What have you seen as far as his, his, his 
I don't think anything's changed. He's been like that since he's been here. He's been a great, a great leader. He's been a humble guy that everybody's respected. And I, I feel like now that he's playing, he's backing up what he, what he came in here as. Uh, they're respecting him more that he's doing at such a young age. So uh, he's going to continue to do that, and we know that too. So we're, we're, we're behind Trevor, and uh, hey, he's just going to keep balling. We're going to keep balling. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Hey, to be honest, no, we don't. I don't feel like we need that vocal guy. I feel like we feed off each other's energy, like how we play, and that's how we roll. Like when somebody makes a good play, I feel like the whole offense is just like, all right, like we're we're playing now. Like just we're we're about to do this. So I feel like we just feed off of how uh, we play as a t as a unit more than uh, just one person. Like just being the voice, if you know what I mean. I saw a video of you uh, walking around campus interviewing classmates. Is there yeah. anything that makes you uncomfortable or? makes you nervous? Uh, talking in front of a lot of people. <laughs> this isn't a lot of people. Like, I'm talking about, like, thousands of people. Like, if I have to, like, if I go back home, like, my high school asked me to talk to the students. I'm like, Shh, I really don't want to do this, but <laughs> I have to. But that's really the thing that makes me nervous. I don't like talking in front of a bunch of people. What was your, what was your message to the students when you went back? And what was that experience like? And obviously, I assume it's going to be a cool thing to be asked to yeah. do yeah, my message is to them, I talked to the football team actually, so um, my message to them was like, they're a young team, so I just told them like, don't worry about like the recruiting stuff right now, because it's going to come. Uh, most schools really don't look at freshmen and sophomores until like they turn junior or senior. So like right now, just focus on technique and what you can control, because right now you can't control like being recruited and stuff right like that. So just focus on playing hard and just putting film up, because that's, that's all that matters at the end of the day, what you put on film. That's what I told them. You had two touchdowns on Saturday, and he also had two. Uh, how special was that for you guys uh, to, to come up so big and such a historical win? It was great, man. On the sideline, we were just talking about telling everybody, you know, Tennessee boys, like everybody, nobody talked about Tennessee boys, but, you know, we put us on the map uh, on Saturday. So uh, we were talking about that, and we're happy just to represent our, our state and our cities like that. Um, and hopefully we can just keep at it. How is it for you to have to wait for your turn to get in the game, and then you get in the game, play for a little while, then, you know, you come back up and Yeah. Yeah, I do. That's what that's what's special about our team. You know, nobody's jealous of anybody. We're all supporting each other. Uh, when somebody else makes a play, we're all going crazy for them. And you know, we're just a brotherhood, and that's just how I feel like. That's why we're so good too. Like we don't. Ha there's no like jealousy on the team. Nobody's hating on somebody. It's no. We're we're all one. Uh, we're all for each other, and I feel like that's why we play so well together on the field. Uh, man, I feel, I feel like it's, it's coming. I feel like it's going to come soon. I just got to keep grinding in practice, uh, just working on the little things and um, uh, trusting my teammates that they're going to go out there and do what they've been doing. Do you feel like since that drop in the Syracuse game, that, I mean, it seems like since then you've really, you've really taken off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that helped me out. I needed that to, uh, like, refocus myself because I feel like I was uh, – perfect at it and I feel like I wasn't going to mess, mess up and I, I just needed that to like get that mindset back that I still need to work on the little things and that's what takes you furthest. There was an interesting graphic that they showed during the game on the screen past you that said Trevor got the ball out in less than a second. It's great. And that he's been clocked at 61 miles an hour. Yeah. Have you ever had to tell him whoa? <laughs> so yeah, I have. I have. Definitely. Like, I still have like two jam fingers that I've been playing with since like Syracuse game but you know I'm used to it now but you know that's that's just the way he plays you know and it's, it's amazing that he can do that consistently because you know most quarterbacks if they do that so much you know they're going to hurt their shoulder or something but he's just amazing man and he's just going to get better. Has there been one pass in practice during the game that he's thrown that's kind of made you go wow I can't believe that just happened? Uh, yeah it's, it's kind of surprised me because, you know, our out routes uh, that we run uh, a lot in RVA, like like when he first got here in the spring, I ran an out route, and it was like I turned my head and it, like, hit me in my helmet. And I was like, golly, like <laughs> that thing was right there. I never That never happened to me before. But, you know, that's just the type of quarterback that he is, and I love that about him. Did you have to increase the velocity on the jugs machine, chuck machines at all when you saw how he could zip it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. I had I had to a little bit. But, you know, I'm – I'm used to it now. The jugs definitely help. That's definitely helped me get used to the way that he throws the ball. So that's why I keep doing that too. 
Is there a huge difference between catching uh, a pass with the velocity that Trevor throws as opposed to Kelly Chase or even Zarek and Hunter last year? Uh, I feel like yeah, he throws it harder than them, but it's like it's still con like as far as the way where they put it, it's the same thing. But I feel like he just gets there, it just gets there faster, if you know what I mean. But uh, they're still all great quarterbacks. And he's just Trevor's just different. I feel like he's different. He's he's a great quarterback, and I mean he's just gonna get better, and y'all gonna see that. In that case, back when they were alternating quarterbacks, was it harder for the, maybe the receivers to adjust when Trevor came in? Because there were some drop passes, I think, uh -huh. during that stretch. I don't, I don't think, I don't think, nah, we got used to that because, you know, in practice we did the same thing. So I feel like all the receivers were used to uh, quick passes from Kelly and passes from Trevor. But we're, it, it never was nothing different. We we're all used to it. At the end of the day, we still got to catch the ball no matter who it's coming from. I didn't feel like it. You know, they were still playing hard after that. And uh, I feel like even down, like, they still played hard the whole game. It was just that we were just rocking, like, we were rolling. And I feel like it just, it may have looked like they quit, but it's just like, we, that's just how we were playing. We we're just so dominant on Saturday. And that's just what it looked like. And I feel like people thought that they quit, but it's just like, we're, we're just rolling right now. And uh, hopefully we can keep it going like that. Like between us and Florida State, yeah, they were they were trying to get in our heads, but uh, coach does a good job of like telling us like not to pay attention to that, uh, just keep playing and let our pads do the talking. Yeah. Both. It's just that's my brother. You know, like uh, we don't like when our quarterback gets his like that, so we're going to back him up. And you know, they they all came over there, so you know, we we gotta protect him. You know, at the end of the day, it's just uh, it just shows our brotherhood too, how how we have each other's back. I feel like the vast majority of people don't maybe quite grasp how difficult it is not only to catch a punt but to catch one. Eighty thousand people in the stands, all the noise, all the the sidelines. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it's a maybe a little bit of an underappreciated skill. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't feel like people know how hard it is. It's, it's, it's definitely hard. It's like when the ball's in the air, it's like it's quiet and it's just you and the ball. Like you got to catch it or like you're going to lose. And it's just like you just can't worry about that, though. I do. I've been working on like a uh, meditation type stuff, like this app that they gave us called Headspace just to help me like calm down. Like when the ball's like before I catch a punt, I take like three deep breaths just so I can calm down and focus on the ball when it comes in the air. Yeah. So uh, that's... How long does it take you to maybe gain the confidence to where it's second nature, you know, catching a punt, securing it, and take it off down the field? Practice. Just practice. Uh, catching as many punts as I can in practice and after practice, uh, just getting used to it so that when the game comes, it's easy, it's natural. What's harder, catching a punt or speaking in front of a lot of other large Speaking, definitely. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking is definitely harder. I say that. Make it look easy. <laughs> I met him last year when he came on a visit. Um, I, I just went up to him and told him what's up. And, you know, I was, like, giving him my recruiting pitches, like, when I was being recruited, just telling him, like, why not come here? Like, this is a place. And, you know, I, I felt like he knew it. And, um, yeah, ever since, our relationship has grown. When you first meet him, you see that he's a big, tall guy with the long, long, yeah. you know, hair. Do you kind of think, like, oh, this guy's probably got kind of a – cocky nature to him or do you kind of maybe form a, a first impression before you get to know him? Uh, no, I don't, I don't really judge people before I meet him. Um, so when I met him, I was like, all right, what type of guy is he? And he came off as a humble guy. So uh, ever since I met him the first time, you know, I always had that respect for him as a player and as a person. So yeah, ever since then, you know, uh, our relationship has grown with us being in Bible study groups together and then off on the field with us being teammates. So I feel like from that first time I met him, our relationship has grown. A lot. Did, that, did that nature and his personality make the transition from the whole Kelly situation much easier because just maybe the way Trevor goes about his business? Yeah, yeah, he he did a good job with that whole situation, just uh just staying humble. You know, he didn't say much about it. He just was still playing his ball. You know, that's what we expected about him. He didn't talk much about it. He just was still playing. He can just do controlling what he can control. That's what coach tells him. Just control what you control, and that's what he was doing. And uh, you know, it played off at the end. Trevor's whole persona kind of. Reeks. Southern California. 
Or say again. This whole persona kind of reeks of Southern California. Oh yeah, definitely. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be. He does. He does seem like a guy that would be from Cali. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks a lot.